Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 205 uh, we'll take a look at some of the updates uh, from our second edition of the Fundamentals of Software Architecture uh, which was released this month, March of 2025. What I really wanted to focus on was some of the highlights of what we added and changed specifically in this second edition. And I'll show you what those highlights are. Plus, we added a third law of software architecture, which I'll show you towards the end of the video. So the first major change we did was in chapter two on architectural thinking. And here we added some new material a lot of details about architecture versus design, plus a lot of new examples to really make this clear, plus some criteria as well. Then moving to chapter three, modularity, an existing chapter in our first edition. However, here we significantly modified uh, this chapter, added a lot of new material about better defining what we mean by modularity within architecture and also the key differences between modularity and granularity and how they uh, play in different architectural styles. So chapter four we had in our prior book and that was the architecture characteristics defined. Here we added a lot of new material uh, regarding some cloud considerations and also some cross-cutting characteristics and how these play into our trade-off and decision-making about what characteristics are in fact important for our particular system. Oh, we also updated a lot of the definitions that we had in the first edition on these various architecture characteristics. Moving on to chapter five with identifying characteristics, we added a lot of new material uh, regarding what are called composite architectural characteristics. Uh, these are characteristics like agility, that can be broken down into other kinds of characteristics, uh, such as modularity, testability, and deployability. Uh, we also added material on how to do prioritization and limit uh, the number of architectural characteristics uh, within your system. Now, Chapter 7 uh, dealt with the scoping of architecture characteristics. In the second edition, this is a complete chapter rewrite. We added a lot of new material and better explained this concept of an architectural quantum. We added aspects of granularity when scoping architectural characteristics and how different communication protocols, specifically synchronous communication, can impact our architectural characteristics. Oh, moving on to chapter eight, we we go away from the architectural characteristics part and start on component-based thinking. This was also a complete chapter rewrite in the second edition, completely restructured with lots of new material on architectural components, identifying components, different techniques for identifying components, a little bit more on component coupling, and also some new material on creating a logical architecture. Now perhaps the biggest change in the second edition of our Fundamentals of Software Architecture is with the architectural styles. We added a lot of new material to each of the architecture styles we talk about in this book. Uh, specifically, we added things about more details about the specifics of each of the chapters in the architectural style, but also Oh, we focused on data and data topologies within each of the architectures, also common risks associated with each architectural style, um, some governance techniques on how to govern these kind of architectures. Also, we added team topology considerations and talked about which team topologies match well with each kind of architectural style. Oh, we also added a few more examples of these architecture styles within each chapter. So essentially, oh, we added a lot of new material in the second edition, all these things I just mentioned, which were not included in the first edition of uh, the book. Now, specifically within architecture styles, I wanna show you three aspects. The first, we added a new chapter 
on the modular monolith. Uh, this is a chapter we did not choose to include in the first edition, but given its popularity, felt like it should really be in this book. So this is a new chapter about the modular monolith architecture style. Now we've learned a lot about event-driven architecture in the past five to six years since we wrote this book. And consequently, uh, we chose to completely rewrite the event-driven architecture style chapter, uh, bringing in new kinds of patterns, new thoughts about events, some anti-patterns, and also a lot of discussions about data and how it relates to event-driven architecture. Similarly, another architectural style that has been undergoing a lot of change since the first edition of this book is microservices. And consequently, this was also a complete rewrite of this chapter, uh, bringing in the second edition a lot of newer and more modern thoughts and practices, patterns and anti-patterns about microservices. And also, oh, we added a lot of new material about granularity within microservices, managing complex workflows within microservices, and also a broader and more detailed discussion about data within microservices. Okay, <clears throat> now <clears throat> at the end of the architecture styles, we added a brand new chapter, chapter 20, about architectural patterns in the foundations chapter, which starts all of the architecture styles, uh, we distinguished what we mean between an architecture style and an architecture pattern. An architecture style being the overarching shape and structure of that system. Whereas patterns are ways of implementing various aspects of an architecture. And so in this chapter, we added quite a few uh, descriptions of some of the more common architectural patterns that can be used with any of the architecture styles we outlined. Now, the follow-on chapters that dealt with architectural risk, architecture decisions and decision-making, and all of the soft skills, we did general updates to, um, adding a few aspects that are, well, new techniques that we found within those topics. But towards the end of the book, you'll find a lot of new chapters. Uh, specifically, chapter 26 is a new chapter in the second edition about the fact that architecture uh, does not live alone, but to make it work requires it to intersect and align with other aspects of the business and technical environment. Specifically, we outline nine of those. Uh, this chapter is kind of an introduction to uh, this concept of intersections of architecture and really is kind of a foreshadowing of our next book that Neil and I are, well, currently working on. Another new chapter that we added at the end of the book was really to summarize the new laws of software architecture. Take more of a deep dive into explaining why these laws are the way they are, and also some more detailed examples of each of these. Now this is where we added a third law of software architecture. So kind of with this new chapter, I want to show you and really review those laws because we did add another corollary to the first law. As you remember from the first edition of the Fundamentals of Software Architecture, the first law of software architecture is that everything in software architecture is a trade-off. And in that new chapter at the end of the book, we give a lot of examples of why this is a law of software architecture. Now, in the first edition, we had our first corollary. And that is if you think you've discovered something that isn't a trade-off, all it really means is you haven't identified the trade-off yet. Well, we added a second corollary in the second edition of the book, which is this. You can't do trade-off analysis just once. It's a continuous process because things change. So it is a trade-off, but we can't just do this once. Now, our second law of software architecture, of course, is the famous why is more important than how, which really describes understanding why 
you did a certain design, which we discovered in the writing of the first edition, really becomes more important than seeing how something works. Well, we did coin a third law of software architecture in the second edition. And that third law is this. Most architecture decisions aren't binary, but rather exist on a spectrum between extremes. And in the book, we provide a lot of examples, uh, including the difference between architecture and design, of which some things, 5%, do exist on the extreme, but the other 95% of the decisions we make lie somewhere in the middle. And this is due to the first law of software architecture because everything is a trade-off. And decisions we make as an architect are not always as clear as we would like them to be. So there you have it. That's the highlights of the second edition uh, due to be published in March 2025, shortly after uh, this recording. Um, enjoy reading. And thank you so much for listening. Again, this has been Lesson 205, kind of introducing our second edition of the Fundamentals of Software Architecture. So stay tuned next month, the first Monday of every month, uh, for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday. And thanks for listening.